Well, the McDonald family's off its leash. We're loose. Uh, Amy's at Taylor Swift's concert today in Ontario, Toronto, Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Um, the girls and I and Ollie stayed back. I have to go to the barn. We got a big day planned. We got a big day planned today. Um, we have the barn. Uh, quickly, we're going to the barn. And then we are going to go to uh, Ollie's flag football game is at 150. Really just a, a little kind of wreck flag football league. What's this guy doing? Thank you. Little fake wave. There you go. Um, uh, so we got flag football at 150. And then we have Addy. Turn that down. Right down. And then Addy has requested the jump place today. The jump place. Um, Ava has requested the mall today, which I don't mind. It's Christmas season. Of course I want to go to the mall. So we're going to hang out there. Now we might go to the different mall. We have a mall maybe 15, 20 minutes away in Beachwood, or in uh, Strongsville, a rather big mall. But Ava likes a store in the Beachwood Mall. Now the Beachwood Mall, I know, is very close to a number of state places. So if everybody's getting what they want today, why can't I? Um, we had a pretty good week. Now, I guess before we start the week, a number of horses selling uh, Saturday, Monday, whether preferred has, I, I believe, the most entries aside from the time they did our fractional ownership uh, auction, the most uh, entries they've ever had. I think they have 50 on uh, 50 on Monday. Um, I see there's some dispersals. A number of people have messaged me about my girl EJ and uh, her younger siblings that are sell selling there must be a dispersal there with a, a portion of the ownership. It says there is, and certainly looks like there is. Uh, my girl EJ is certainly not the type of horse you sell, and uh, neither is the yearling or the weanling. So I'll be watching that, but I wouldn't get your hopes up. I'm assuming that Ron Burke will retain, will retain those horses. Now, what is interesting, and by the time you watch this video, it'll all be over, is the auction on, on gate today. Uh, there's two Captain Corey shares that I'm, I'm pretty interested in. And um, there's a Breeding the King of the North. Now, I'm looking ahead to see uh, Lover's Play is a tactical landing. It was by Muscle Hill. So that takes away that side of the, the breeding industry. Now, we could go back to Captain Corey again. With, with her, like we did a number of the other mares last year, last year. but King of the North is very uh, interesting also. So we'll see what the King of the North breeding goes for. We'll see what the Captain Cory uh, shares go for. Now, Captain Cory, you know, people underestimate this horse. One, I've seen them all at the sales. They all look amazing. We broke four of them, I believe four. They all look really nice going. I've talked to a couple other people that said they like theirs. He got a decent book of mares. I know there was at least one horse sold for over 300000 by Captain Corey. So there's a lot out there to be uh, interested in when it comes to Captain Corey. Here's a horse that is stud fee right now is 85. If he explodes onto the scene, it won't take long for it to go up, especially since Hanover is, is standing him. And they've reduced, great, greatly reduced the stud fees on both Tall Dark Stranger and Green Shoe this year. Green Shoe went from 25 or 30 to 10. And I think uh, Tall Dark Stranger last year, I couldn't even secure, I couldn't even secure a Tall Dark Stranger breeding for twelve thousand cash up front, no guarantees. I couldn't get it done. So his stud fee must have been fifteen or twenty, and it's eighty five hundred now. So there is a place for a top sire to uh, make its way up the ranks in Hanover. Sig Sauer is entering the market. Now, um, Six Hour is, uh, was the horse that won the Breeders' Crown. A horse I think is a very, very nice horse. Really, really like him. Of course, we have, she sits at the bar's brother, Volume 8, who is breeding now. I don't know if he got a ton of mares for this year. And then, of course, you got Captain Corey. There's, there's been a ton of interest in Captain Corey across the board. So, um, I, I'll be upfront. The shares went for 32 or 33,000 in Harrisburg, anything south of 30 is probably, um, it's always a gamble, but it's probably a good deal. Um, so I'll be watching those. 
watching wolves as we get ready to breed our mares, uh, as we get ready to breed our mares uh, this spring. So, uh, what took place at the at the barn this week? Obviously, we started off Monday. Looks like money was a winner. Now he's up at the preferred this Monday. We'll see how he does. It seems like he's lost a step. Uh, and, and I guess that's maybe not the best choice of words. He appears to have lost a step right now, but I can't really see any reason that he can't find that step again and move forward. It just takes quite a while for a horse to get from a really good horse to an open trotter. If he's been there, you know, there's always that opportunity to go back, but it is a tough jump from that backup class type trotter to the open trotter type. There's nothing wrong with having uh, either. And if looks like money is going to be that horse, that's fine. I, I told you guys, I don't like playing that ladder game, but when it comes to jumping from the open and then back down where you can climb your way up, if you're if you're at the top of the food chain below the open, it's not the end of the world. It's when you're not really, like, yo, mister, he could do really well in that 21, 18, 21, 23 class, up in the 24, 25, 28, whatever they called it, however they filled it. He struggled a little bit sometimes. 24, I guess he did pretty good at but you saw the difference yesterday. Dropped down to a true class. Now this is a horse that was forced into the what would have been the preferred at Mohawk last week. Yet fit the numbers of 15. He dropped off a ton of money and ended up could have raced in the bottom class at the Meadows, but they won't let you drop all the way down. I had to explain that to one of our clients the other day. They said, Anthony, you guys got him in the wrong class. It's numbers of 5,000. He fits numbers of 2,000. No. There isn't a race secretary with any sort of conscience in North America that would allow Yo Mister to drop into the numbers of 2,000. It's funny because a number of years ago we were talking about conditions. And and uh, back when Ontario had a ton of money and slots were booming, they were looking to make the condition sheets standard across the board, which I thought was a terrible idea. But um, that's what they were looking to do. And I remember one gentleman... Uh, a prominent owner in Ontario stood up and said, if my horse fits in numbers of 2,000, he better be in the numbers of 2,000. And I'm, I'm not going to drop names, the owner or the race secretary, but the race secretary stood up, one sex we heard, and firmly said, if your horse is going to be one to nine, he's not racing in any class on my track. And that, and that's kind of the thing, right? The race secretary is the last line of defense uh, for the horseman to the betters. So I could have raced, yo, yo, mister, was one to nine yesterday, and then I was a 5,000. Now I'm winners of 2,000. You could have almost barred him from betting. And that's why the race secretary has to step in and say, no, you can't do that. In Ohio, they weren't going to let us drop into lower than numbers at 8,000. I did a little shopping before before we decided where we were going to go with them. I talked to Jason and, and Tim um, about, you know, where, where we're, what our options were. And obviously the Meadows was the best one. Now he won yesterday. He still fits. That number is at 8,000 at, at Dayton, which I suspect coming off a win like yesterday, 54 and a piece in the mud with the earplugs in, uh, he'll like the number is at 8,000 at Dayton also. So um, just a look at how things get moved around. You know, uh, I had a, uh, one of our clients say, and, and I get this all the time, we have the people that want to hang on to the horses too long, and we have the people that don't want to hang on to them at all. And then you have me. I'm left trying to do both. Right? I'm trying to gauge a horse's talent, his, his or her um, perspective talent, and then decide whether this is a horse worth keeping. I thought we had a lot of good horses last year. I'll bring up a horse, a Century Legion. Okay? This is actually the perfect case. Large group of people own uh, Century Legion. One or two owners own quite a bit more than the other people. One of those owners would just as soon sell him and move him on. One of those owners wanted him turned out for 12 weeks, brought back in February, January, February, and given all the time in the world. I didn't agree with either of them, to be honest. When it comes to Century Legion, he's an athlete. I, I have zero interest, I told you guys this, and I'm going to stick to it regardless. I have zero interest in racing, uh, resting horses for 8 to 10 to 12 weeks that are healthy. Right? I think it's wasteful. I think they're athletes, and no athlete in baseball, football, basketball sits on the couch for three months in between seasons. They're always working. Right? They might have some downtime with their family. They might do some things that are a little less stressful. But at the end of the day, uh, they don't stay too far from work. And that's exactly my thoughts when it comes to a horse like Century Legion. 
uh, you know, in like a lion, out like a lamb type of thing this year. Come in with that massive qualifier and all these hopes and expectations wrapped around him as he started the season and immediately began to let everybody down. And did not have a good season and just seemed to deteriorate as the season went on. Now, to be fair, that first qualifier in two minutes was still just two minutes, but it looked pretty impressive. So my my issue was he did have issues. His knees were open a little bit. He had splints up front that were a little hot that bothered him. They were bothersome. Right hind seemed to have something that bothered him. He was over a little bit. But lo and behold, we brought him back after six weeks. He's not over on the left shaft anymore. That right hind, I would imagine, would be a tiny bit immaturity in a stifle. He's a big, growthy colt. And even more over the, the fact that he got six weeks and not eight or 10 or 12 speaks volumes as to if you believe I'm right. If you think that's right, then six weeks did the trick. Didn't need the eight weeks, didn't need 10 weeks, didn't need 12 weeks. Or say Gaslight Hall, I don't mind giving him time. He has structural issues that bother him. His knees kill him. And they need to cool down. So yes, I don't mind giving him eight or nine weeks. Century Legion has been training good over here. And somebody said, well, I, I don't think training a big horse down and a half is beneficial. Every horse is different. Again, you have to be careful not to fall into that trap, right? That cookie cutter trap when it comes to, oh, I used to have horses and this is how we did it, or my brother did, or this is how my trainer did it back in the day, or even now, this is how we did it last year. None of that matters because they're not with this particular horse. I'm trying my best to let Century Legion tell me what is best for Century Legion. Not me or any of the clients that are associated with him. That's my job. I trained him the other day. I thought the horse trained great. Now we're gonna train him again this morning and I'm gonna evaluate him now. Now that he went that one training trip, he felt good, I let him scoot a little bit on the end of it. Now what do you look like three days later? That's what I wanna see, that's my job. See how the horse performs, evaluate him on training day, reevaluate him throughout the week after, and again, and again, and again, rinse and repeat until we get him to the races. And listen to him the whole way down. And that's what's important. So. I know everybody wants what's best. And I know some people just say, just cut bait, just sell them after his two-year-old year and be done with it. Just be careful, that's a slippery slope. Somebody said, I've never seen horses, you turn them out and hope they come back, but I've never seen them come back good, really? I think time is on my side, it was okay this year, because he was horrible at two. Yeah, he won a mile and 54 and four at Mohawk. I could almost run a mile and 54 and four at Mohawk. It's not an impressive mile, and he wasn't an impressive colt. I can tell you one person that was not impressed with him throughout his two-year-old season, and even after we turned him out, was James. And keep in mind, time is on my side, was a high double digits every time he went behind the gate in every major stake race this year. And the only one that he didn't come out making big chunks of money and doing really well, overachieving and impressive, impressing everyone around, was in the Breeders' Crown Final. That's because he was part. He raced great in the Milstein. That was his first ever mile on a half mile track, aside from training down at Northfield, where he might have went a mile in 2.5. The first fast mile he ever did, and I was up to the quarter at 25 and 4 with him from the rail. Finished second, 50 and whatever. And that was weeks after he finished third to Captain Albano in, uh, in the Adios. He was a terrible two year old, we turned him out, castrated him, brought him back and he turned into the horse we expected and wanted him to be. Now the important component of that, the most important thing about that, that he talked to everybody about is what had happened when he came back. Because we brought him back in January, we were able to race fairly watered down competition all the way through to, to April. And it gave us a very unique perspective, one on the horse and two of his calendar in front of him. And we were able to give him breaks throughout the spring into the first part of the summer and it kept him fresh right through the end of the year and he's still fresh. We just gave him two more weeks, which I think he deserved. He's back at Tim's this morning. He'll be back racing in the first part of December. Now Yonkers, I keep forgetting about this, Megan told me, they take a break for like a month or something at Yonkers, mid-December. 
I would say you'll see Time is on My Side make its way to Yonkers at some point, but it'll likely be in the early parts of 2025 now, and not so much uh, 2024. It's fine. A lot of discussions with our clients about Arson, where he's going to go. I don't know yet. I don't know where Arson's going to go yet. <laughs> maybe time is on my side, stays at the Meadow, stays at Dayton. Maybe we go to Ontario. Maybe Arson, maybe he gets around a half. I just don't think he's as, he's quick in his feet. One, I don't think they're very, very similar colds. So I, I don't think it's fair to say I think time's better. It doesn't matter. They're very, very similar colds. And we're very lucky to have both of them. Now, the difference, I guess, if you're looking long range on Arson as opposed to Time is on my side, Arson has four year old stakes in Kentucky next year. <laughs> time does not. They all have open you know, races, but you got to be careful, right? You don't want to get butting heads with those you know, hard nosed age sources. Just be very careful. So, this four year old year, both of them are going to be crafted in a way that we can maximize their, their racing potential without crushing them. Under the under the hoops, so to speak, of some battle-tested aged horses. So, getting back on topic, uh, we're talking about we were talking about Century Legion and why I opted to keep it, and that is why it's because I want to give every my job is to evaluate the horses, the ones that I have deemed uh, worthy to get a chance should get every opportunity available to them to show us what they can do as sophomores. And the ones that haven't, they're going to go. That's the way it is. So, uh, Monday was looks like money. Race good. All gas, no brakes. First start back. Eight hole. James took him back. Closing on the end of it. He, he drove him the safe way. Now, he picked over him this week. There's somebody, I'm not sure who, but Chris Christopher, who knows the horse well and gets along very well with him. George of the Jungle. I'm going to race him on uh, Tuesday. All right, raced him on Tuesday. He was a flat fourth. Tuesday, but he was a flat fourth and showed a little bit of mucus again, tiny bit of blood, lots of stuff we can work on. And we opted to race him this week, but I'm not going to be going out of there with him. I want to make sure that he's comfortable, happy, and sharp heading into the final. That's what Tuesday will be all about. Now we come out Wednesday, brace for landing, right line hard the whole way, but raced very, very good. I was happy with the way he raced. Um, insider trading raced probably one of our best miles of the year. You know, one of our one of my partners said, do you think it was her best mile, though? You, you need to stay away from the speed. Oh, well, she trotted 150.73 and so-and-so. I don't care. She never raced good. I'll put it this way. I don't know that she raced good one time this year other than the other day. So by default alone, it was her best mile of the year. She's a well-bred filly. I've had a couple of people that see she's in the, the sale in Mount Hope call and ask about her. You know, what our thoughts are on her. I know what number I believe she should bring, and I don't think I'm far off. All of those fillies, for that matter. And we'll see how that plays out. Lover's Play continues to do the best she can. Big mile and 2-3 the other night, but that's how bad the track got. And I guess it was windy also, but that's how bad the track got. She was a little short coming in. That qualifier at 59 looks nice, but when you have a hard track that's fast in the qualifiers, and then you have a race at 10 o'clock at night when it's windy and the track's terrible. It's quite a difference. She was just beat at the wire. She was tired going under the wire, but she did what she could. Um, La Dorian made that break in the first turn. I did blame the track. And I, I'm hard on myself when I make a mistake. It wasn't me. She didn't. She did make a break because of the track. and She's not going to be re-entered. Uh, she was re-entered just to make sure at, North, at Northfield. Didn't get in. She's going to be going back to the Meadows next Thursday or Friday, I hope. And then uh, we went to the muddiest part of the week. Thursday and Friday were both horrible days. Oh, my God. Thursday, infinitely worse than Friday. Um, Pickpocket raced good. He raced really, really good out of the eight hole. Finished third and 55. I was happy with him. Ready for landing a little flat, but a little short. He'll be better next time. Greatest ending. Um, I thought greatest ending was looked flat. His line looked much better than the race. But, again, he's got to race himself into shape. Uh, Patrick Deprano raced as good as he could from the outside. And Captain Incredible looked incredible. No, he didn't. That's that's not fair. It's a, I, I don't need to pump his tires. Norris looked very, very good. Looked impressive. 
I was really enthused with him. Nothing he has done this year has let me down other than the fact that he didn't make hundreds of thousands of dollars. He is immature. You can see, you know, his knees were hurting him after Lexington. He was mechanically pretty good. I think his feet were hurting him a little bit the other day on that. When it gets muddy, the track gets hard. And he was very protective of himself in the turns. But that's in, that just goes to show how smart that horse is. Rather than get, usually when you get horses that are a little pinchy in the turns, they get a little warmer. They don't get quiet. They get a little hotter and some of them can make breaks, right? Captain Incredible recognized what his top speed was in that turn and took his time through the turn. What's wrong? Are you, oh, you had a question earlier. Do you remember what it was? No? No? Okay. Um, yeah, he, he just took his time through the turns and then was so smart about it and then took off. I mean, he finished his best rides of the race, aside from down the back stretch when he cleared to the front, um, were going through the wire. The horse was very strong and very confident going through the wire, which you want to see. So there was two there was two paths. Addy, you got to turn that down, honey. There's only two paths. The path that goes to the Governor's Cup and the path that goes to the field. Those were the only two paths available after Thursday afternoon's race, and I chose the latter. I chose the field because I, I was very clear about everybody. Our plan was to race him in the Governor's Cup if he showed me he should be there. Now, you can say, well, the turns are bigger. They weren't bothering him as much. It wasn't that. It was that they were bothering him at all. And I have to ask myself, if he's got some stuff bothering him and we go down there and ask him to, you know, throw a little 151, 152 on the fire, or maybe faster, you know, is that something we want to do with this horse that we know is maybe not 105%? I am protective of them. We have a lot of money into this horse. None of that matters now. And I think I was as blunt and as upfront as I could be with everybody the other day. Captain Incredible does not care what we paid for him. Not even in the least. His job now is to do the best he can. And our job now is to help him do that. And that's exactly why he's in the field and not on his way to New Jersey. Um, Save America. I thought raced very well, kind of emptied him out the last turn. I thought that his, one of his biggest challengers was coming. I think that Austin made the appropriate move with the horse, dropped the earplugs and chased him, maybe emptied him out a bit in the, in the last turn as it turned out and, uh, and ended up a, uh, and ended up a, a decent third. He drops down in class now too. Um, Admiral Dio race good, finished second again. My only issue with Admiral Dio is is his consistently get, consistently getting into race. If he does not get in next Thursday, he will have papers pulled, and he will be on his way to the Meadows um, shortly thereafter. Because I, I just can't race a horse every two weeks. It's not good for the horse. First off, to race every two weeks as you start your career, it's not good for him. Uh, Dad, yes, honey. Um, but why are we going back this way? What's that, sweetie? The barn. the barn is that way, honey. Remember? We used to live down there. We'd come up here, and the barn's down there. But, Daddy, Starbucks is right there. Yeah, there's a Starbucks right there. Yeah. Uh -huh. So, then why did you... Uh... Who's the best person? Oh, cop, cop. Cop, cop. That is a cop, cop. Cop, cop. So, Rock oh, Shining oh, Star, oh, uh, Rock oh, Shining oh, Star oh. raced well also. I was really happy with him kind of looking, uh, got him to the outside at the three eights and then you know, trying to advance this time of year into, into that speed. I know that he was parked the whole way in 51 in Sayota. That was a hot night and he raced his butt, he raced his butt off, but, um, uh, first over slow grind three eights from fifth. It'll chew you up and it did for this horse. So he drops down also next week. I suspect both him and uh, Save America will do very well. Now, Friday, I didn't know what to think. I hadn't sat behind Yo Mister for quite a while, hadn't, hadn't driven him, hadn't looked at him. And man, I was thoroughly impressed with what I saw from Yo Mister. I think he's sharp as a tack right now, and uh, he should probably race in Dayton. I had floated the idea last night to Stacy. Uh, and I will to Tim also, that Spitfire Overseas should probably come up to the Meadows for a couple of starts. Let Yo Mister go down there for a couple of starts, get reunited with Stacy and Brett, and see how he does down there. Spitfire Overseas, it's important for everybody to understand, he was never put away sore. And I said this in last night's video. He was never put away sore. There was never any issue with, uh, there was never any issue with uh, Spitfire Overseas. We just gave him time off, right? He had raced for a year and a half. We gave him time off, brought him back. It takes time 
Uh, same thing I, I told you a minute ago with looks like money. It takes time to get them back up into um, that open level caliber of a horse. Now, I was disappointed last night with the break. There's not much you can do about that. This is not, if you go back and look at his lines, this is not um, foreign to him. He's gone through these little valleys where he's been kind of poor. Um, but I, I suspect he'll bounce right back. Uh, so Yo Mister marching fourth was decent. Uh, I thought he was okay. Three point blue chip was finishing up very strong and looked good. Tenacious Hanover did all he could. Those were tough horses that were one two. And for him to be out in the third turn and attacking, I wasn't surprised. I would like to see him finish up strong and be third, but instead he was a, an okay fifth. Yes. Um, uh, it would you um, I don't really know if mosquitoes in your home is is not here it's in Ontario. Is that it's not even in the right country and it's not really video fodder, so to speak, right? And really, if you're gonna raise your hand, you should be addressing me, not not Ava, right? Why? But I'm a co-pilot. It's true, you are. Uh, and then text on soprano talk about a bounce back. You know, I keep telling you guys, good horses are good horses. They just have to come back around. And it takes time. I was very concerned with, uh, and, and everybody should have been. I'm sure Megan was, Scott was, all of you out there were. Tech Song Soprano did not look like Tech Song Soprano his first three starts back. He looked terrible. Had the outside though, had excuses, but still did not look good. I didn't know what would happen last night. And when, and when uh, I think it was George Brennan, if I'm not mistaken, I could be wrong. Um, when he launched him out and on the mover in the last turn, the horse finished up very strong. I was thoroughly impressed with the way he finished up his mile. Third and what, 51 and 1, 51 and 4, something like that. Probably tried at 53, 52 and a piece. I thought the horse raced really well. So we had a great Friday. We don't have anything on the go today. Today is McDonald Family Day. And since Mum is not a fan of Christmas shopping, maybe we'll spend some time at the mall today. Maybe we'll get some shopping from Mum today. Why Mum doesn't like She just doesn't like the crowds and she doesn't like the pressure that mums are always under at, Chris at Christmas. She loves Christmas. I just tease her all the time. But thank you. Mom yeah, said don't that do that. She hates Christmas. What her to school? She she hates the stress that comes with Christmas because her family's coming over. So we go back to Ontario. Her family's coming over. So um, fire. Yeah, they're they're coming over for yeah, Christmas yeah. supper. So mom's worried about getting to Ontario, cleaning the house up, cleaning the house up, and making sure that there's food and that everybody has a good time and putting the tree up and the lights and she, that's just stuff that stresses her. Out, right? Me, I. I just like, I just like Christmas. I like going to the mall. You have to drive up beside them. You gotta wave. No, no, no. Yeah, who is that? It's a fire department. Oh, you gotta wave. How do you gotta wave? Okay, they're not gonna see you. They're busy going to fight a fire, probably. Uh, so, this is a small wall, right? The sales are done for the most part. Yes, there's on gate preferred, and we are trying to acquire resources, but the yearling sales are done now. I think we had a great yearling sale, season sale. What's wrong? What's a shrink? Shrink is a psychiatrist. It's a nickname. Short form. That's what For people what call the, it. Shrink. Are they like the lab people? No, a psychiatrist. Wow, what are you looking at? Oh, yeah, your story. Um, so, uh, sale season is done now. Uh, as I said, we are trying to acquire horses, but most importantly, I, I like to just take the time in these small little lulls in our calendar just to catch my breath. It's nice to get the babies up and going. We'll have some videos for you guys next week. Um, it's Christmas season. It feels great. It's going to be a good Saturday here. We're here a little bit late. And, uh, Why? Well, we're here late because you slept in, you turkey. You slept in, you turkey. And uh, you that's all right. We got lots and lots and lots of time. Uh, lots of time are pulling in right now to uh, go with some babies and go with some racehorses. So with that, I'm going to let you guys go. I hope you had a wonderful week because we did have a pretty good week at the track. We had uh, no issues with the babies, breaking them, starting to get them going. As I said, we'll have some videos for you next week of them. We're trying to get our horses situated in the place that they can mo make the most damage. And most importantly, also, yes, honey, starting to now plan for... Uh, our open house that is coming up in December. I guess I skipped over one of the most important parts. All week I've been asking you guys to send me emails and thoughts about having a sale at the stable for Black Friday, which 
I've come to I've come to learn from uh, the internet that it's not Black Friday anymore. It's more Black Friday week, like the whole week. So I, I don't know the best way to do it. I think we're gonna unlock our uh, we're gonna unlock our, our uh, homebreds. Shh, shh, wait. Where you, where's your coat at, honey? That's a sweater. That's not a coat. Oh, I didn't bring it. Oh, you didn't bring it. You forgot that it was November. Okay. Um, we are going to have a sale for to move the shares of our racehorses that are still on the board, and also uh, our homebreds coming up. So, I'll, I'll talk more about it this week. In fact, I may have a dedicated video to the Black Friday week sale, whatever it is, uh, next week. It's more or less just a way for us to. If we can, I've had uh, deep conversations with John and, and everybody else at this table, wondering what's the best way to do this and if it's possible, because it's hard, right? Put yourself in my shoes. Those shares that are on the on the stable website now for the two-year-olds coming three, that's the cost we have into them. So there's two sides to this. One, are you okay losing money with them? Two, you're better off just to move them than, than keep them there. Now, well, we're not gonna be unlocking, uh, we're not gonna be reducing the shares of the horses that we are planning on moving but the horses that we plan on keeping, most definitely we will. So, uh, a little more vague, but as I said, I'll, uh, I will. I'll make a video about uh, about the sale next week uh, for us, in-house. I'll make that in the next little while, but for right now, I have to get to the barn, go in the barn, get the horses going, get some horses trained, and get on my way. Big day for the McDonald's. A very, very big day. We have... Burn. Burn. Football. Football. Mall. No, Jump Place, then Mall. No, Yeah, and then Steakhouse. No, 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 it's not Mall, then Jump Place. The Mall is out by the Steakhouse. It's simple. Jump Place, Mall, Supper, Home. Anyway, for those of you who uh, watched the fights last night, uh, I told everybody, right? Mike Tyson looked exhausted after the He got 58 years old. That's what's in store for all of us, right? You looked how vicious he was when he was 20. <laughs> how tired he looked when he was 58. I'm not that far away from there, too. So, um... The UFC is on tonight. For those of you who watch combat sports, John Jones is fighting for the first time in a long time. I might tune into that one too. The guy he's fighting used to be the world champion. You know where he lives? Right here in Cleveland. Who does? Stipe Miocic is who's fighting John Jones tonight. And Stipe Miocic, cool. you know what he was? Do you know what he did? What? He was a firefighter in Cleveland. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, take care. I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. It has been, it's, it's nice. We had a good week. Everything looks good. Everything's coming up roses. And it's a nice, quiet weekend where I get to hang out with the family. Don't get to do it often, but I'm going to do it today. Take care.